What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout for victory. Amen. I sing from, if I get it right, to our side to come up on this side here. And so he would have met with new people again. And, um, and when we got to know him, it did have that impact on each and every one of us. And so we are here to celebrate that moment of having known a very good life. Uh, we'll expound more on that in the eulogy and as I go through the sermon, sermonette for today. But I just want to invite us to take our Bibles. Well, if you do have it, many of us have it on our phones. It will come down from heaven. And those who have died believing in Christ will rise to life first. Then we who are living at that time will be gathered up along with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So then encourage one another with these words. Those of us who believe in Jesus, I'm very, very certain that my mother did believe in Jesus. Those were our question. And so, as they may, uh, I want to invite to express condolences at this time, Rose Joseph Jeremiah. Um, he could come this way this time. Sing the song, How Great Thou Art. So, I am the sister of Stephanie. So I'm going to sing How Great Thou Art, that we would know how great the Lord is. Oh Lord, my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the world.
implemented certain rules and expected everyone to be. If one of his kids disobeyed, trust me when I say he would get upset. It may take months before he even speaks to them again. He loved his family and time with his children, especially teaching them how to play board games like Monopoly, Ludo, Scrabbles, and Nomu. Those were his favorites. He would win most of the times on purpose. His kids would cry and he would laugh and make them try again. He called it tough love. He loved doing silly things to get a reaction from them. He would put toothpaste in their hair, hide their toys, their books, their phones and shoes, especially if he knew they were late for somewhere and he would go about doing his things as if it wasn't him. Eventually, he would give in and give it back to them and have a big laugh over it. He loved to draw. He always drawing something. He had a good hand for craft, just as much as a hand was good at construction. Everyone knows Marlon because he is the rest man from Tamana that either did work on their house or build their house completely. He worked all over Trinidad and Tobago, so much so that it took a toll on him that caused severe health problems with his spine and foot. Even in his pain, he never changed. For Christmas, he always wanted to buy the biggest turkey he could find in the supermarket. And trust me when I tell you, by the second or third day, it was finished because he loved his belly. Stephanie was always in the kitchen cooking something, and he would always make the joke and say, he is starving, she's trying to kill him. He would say, I got dead here earlier, Stephanie trying to kill me. Man hungry to death. But when she gave him the food, he would say, man choking. No tea, no juice, no nothing. No, he wasn't hungry. He just did it to get her upset because he knows she loves to quarrel. So while she is quarreling, he is laughing. He just loved to keep his family on their toes. Schoolwork, he never mixed with that with his kids. He pushed each and every one of his children in school. What would happen if they failed a subject or didn't do their homework? Or he got a complaint from the teacher? Let's just say he didn't spare the rod and spoil the child. Family functions is something he never missed. He loved visiting family members and catching up on full time. I am sure we could all testify to this. Marlon was always by some family member having a good time. Music, that is the joy of his life. That is the joy of his. He loved reggae music. He would get up to dress for work on 4 a.m. in the morning. Music would be blasting throughout the neighborhood. Oh, how this annoyed their kids, his kids as it disrupted their sleep. I am sure the neighbors as well. But no one ever told him anything because by five, he was out of the house and on his way to work. As I conclude, let's remember today that God is in control of every situation and he knows best. Some may say my life was cut short, but he fulfilled his destiny. He did his duties. He left his legacy. He impacted who needed to be impacted. He lived a life full with no regrets and he was he always had fun doing so. Let's never forget him and always keep his memories alive in our hearts until we see him again. Thank you. Enjoying our encounters. The last time I visited the home, um, everything Marlon had around the house, Marlon was there. It was a passion food. I'm telling you the biggest passion fruit I've ever seen. Real sweet, nice passion fruit. Now, plenty of people are fast with the passion fruit twinkle, but he looking all over, but he must find. And he found passion fruit, and everything else is looking together. Man, go this, that. Tell him I go, he's still looking for height. The other thing I really appreciate about him, he really does like to conduct an intellectual conversation. And as much as he likes to do, that little joke and what have you, and all of us. But if you really listen to him, he was really a guy of depth. You know, and um, and you're watching him in his simplicity there. But that depth was passed on to his children. And um, 
walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the side he meditated. Say, wow, God, I... So I'm looking at this modern version that I have before. And hear what it says, and then I will just make two points and close off. It says here, Happy are those who reject the advice of evil men, who do not follow example of sinners, or join those who have no use for God. Instead, they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord, and they study it day and night. They are like trees that grow beside a stream that bears fruit at the right time and whose leaves do not dry up. They succeed in everything they do. But evil men are not like this at all. They are like straws that the wind blows away. Sinners will be condemned by God and kept apart from God's own people. The righteous are guided and protected by the Lord, but the evil are on their way to their doom. We are living in a time where we need more people like Madam, who have principle. And um, Matthew Henry, a favorite uh, Bible comment uh, commentator, I would quote it to my church over and over. And this is very applicable to Mama. And the point that I'm going to make with someone. Matthew Henry says, If when my time on earth is done, and that which I am called to do is not done, then I am, on, I am undone forever. Did, did you get that? If when my time on earth is done, and that which I am called to do is not done, then I am undone forever. God only brings us here for a purpose. And he gives us a time to complete and accomplish that purpose. You, nobody's going to be getting extra time or, 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 or less time. He's giving you the right time for it because he knows the beginning from the end. And if it is at 46, God says, I'm ready to take Marlon, is because if Marlon purpose is accomplished, full stop. Amen. Because after that, the next time Marlon sees him is to be alive with him forevermore. So, so, so why we live at the point in this sin sick world? Are we together? And if his work was to be able to nurture his children, he never held back his children from coming to church. And we live in a time where people are taking growing up their children to pray much more to come to church. And we are in Trinidad today. Tell me the truth. The Bible says in the last days, men's heart will be feeling them for fear. Aren't we literally fearful in Trinidad? Now, let's, let's be honest. In that certain places, you would not go. You wouldn't be night nor day because you're not too sure. And people are so edgy you now, everybody like I have a demon on them, they're just ready to kill, they just want to chop up, just, I mean, just recently this week, I mean, one guy just trip and chop up. All I mean, what are what, 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 what we really living in? And, and, and all the advice that we are getting is from evil men. How to do it wicked, how to do it worse, how to do it, you know what I mean, As your, your, your children and they go to school, they are taught that. You take that from him? You take that? Nah, man, they should have fussy hair, they should have if parents are not telling the children that. And I looked just this week and saw a school girl on Facebook. You all maybe seen her too. Take a big stone. The pen on her teacher to bust she head and his other teachers had to come and break and this and that and saying, where is this thing going? I am saying time is running out on all of us. And COVID making that happen for many of us faster than we anticipate. I am saying this is not about vaccinated or unvaccinated. This is about God finishing up the work for righteousness sake. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous too. Things will come to you. And if this service 
as a result of man is to remind one of us to get serious with God because he's coming again. Well, then this service was well rooted. I am saying to all of us, let us not be in the council of the ungodly. We know better to associate ourselves with the righteous. And not be ashamed of God. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God unto salvation. Don't be ashamed to be a Christian. Don't be afraid to pray. Don't be ashamed. You know, you're going in a restaurant and you sit down and you're having me before you and you're pretending you ain't praying but you know you're praying. Don't bother with that. You're thanking God for this meal because plenty don't have. So you thank God for it and you have the money to buy it in Jesus' name. You say amen when you hear truth. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. And you thank God that the gospel was evidently seen. In Marlon's and the entire Frederick family, may God continue to hold you. God continue to keep you. And for the rest of us, keep our focus. He's coming again. And so, Father, we thank you. That there's always hope in you. Help us to renew that hope in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, I invite us to sing that last song, Higher Ground, and pressing on your heart. After which we we'll have the prayer of comfort and the close in prayer that. So let us kindly stand. It is not hard to find. Let's open the program. The very next song. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bow. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand. My feet on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Last time, Lord, lift <laughs> You know you just have some different thing in this this stanza saying My heart has no desire to stay Where doubts arise and fair dismay Though some went well where these are bound My prayer, my aim is higher ground Lord lift me up and I shall stand By feet on heaven This afternoon, as we come before you, you know that we are sad. We have lost someone who we love very much. Friends and family alike, we have lost someone. And this evening, as I pray to you, I pray for the family, that you would bless them that you will give them the strength and courage to go on, knowing that this is not the end of all of them, but that one great day should we all remain faithful to you, we would have the joy of that great time when the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised and we who are alive shall be changed. Bless them, O oh Father, they may be thinking about the trying times that they may have as time go by. But, oh Father, we know that you are their promises all over your world for times like these. Fear not, for I am with you. Though we lost everything, you have promised to be with us even until the end of the world. Help us, oh Father, to remember these things. Help us to trust. Help us to know, help them to know that they are not alone. Comfort them with joy, with songs, with the desire to walk with you even unto the end of the world. Bless his friends also. Help, O oh Father, that he's gone, but they could think about these times 
when they came and listened to what was said, that they would make a great determination also to walk with you. So on that great day, we shall all join together as one, giving praise and thanks to your holy name, saying that this is our God. We have waited for him, and he has come, and he will save us all. This be our prayer this evening, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We have baptism at our report river. So let's we have to back up there. Public ordinance or public gathering is separate and apart from church. There should be no more than 10 persons. And the churches and the members were excited to come out to give support. And I and I told and I said to one of the members, because one told me, Pastor. We up in a repo here, we just do the only thing because nobody will see nothing, <laughs> nobody will come up here. <laughs> and then when the police and all come by the river to line, <laughs> they just just aim for the with us. Because <laughs> they know the scene up here. <laughs> and I said to that person, the beauty of being an honest person, and also an honest Christian, is obeying even when nobody is watching. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Doing the right thing even though you're not going to be caught. You do the right thing for the right thing sake. You know if it's in your heart that you've done the right thing. And I'm saying that to say this. It still does apply. When we go to the cemetery, the law says there's only 10 persons at the cemetery, including the officiating minister. Not 10 plus the minister, including the minister. So I'm kindly asking you, I discussed it with the family, you agree with me at the time, I hope the agreement is still in place, and um, of themselves also, we don't want no unnecessary contact to take place so nobody leaves the cemetery also with COVID. You want to hug, you want to express your condolences, and that alone does spread the thing. Mm -hmm. And I want to just add one little thing again. COVID really has spread by family more than anything else. You see, because you're not living in the same house, and a sister come from so with her family, and a brother come from so, and a cousin come from so, all them different houses, one hug one, and everybody hug each other there. And the whole family over there. This is not about family, this is about household. You understand the difference? If you're living in the same household, it's one thing. And our family all by all point, I don't know where they went. So I just want to appeal to us. Give our condolences right now here. Still maintain the distance. Because you know man and I from COVID. So I don't want us to pass any more COVID to the same family. There's enough pain and enough loss. Say your stuff here, but when it that um, post inside to leave from me, when I reach at the cemetery, I only expect to see nine plus myself. Mm -hmm. The violation for that is fifty thousand dollars mm -hmm. plus imprisonment. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't conduct any service at the cemetery when I don't have fifty thousand dollars. And I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> All right? So, God's blessing, everybody. Uh, we uh, take the casket and carry it out further to the front of the unit. And um, straight down in front. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you cannot open a closed casket, but it has a glass. Please do not flock around each other. You know, as many times you could say that after that reach there and everybody come around and everybody don't start to touch up each other and I'm saying all common sense going out the door. <laughs> so let's keep it in check. You know, um, maintain the distance and from there we go straight up the road. If I don't see you all again, I hope we see the right in the body. All blessings everybody.
hands we commit to your son back to the earth from whence he came. We pray, dear Father, that when your angels return with you, that this grave would be marked, dear Father, and so that he would be ransomed from the grave and keep, keep him with your will, so that he could spend the ceaseless days of eternity with the rest of us. May you continue to be with the rest of the family as we commit them to you even now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You also continue to be singing and... Does 
basic hair, enough to be named. Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long night dreary, I know my Savior cares. Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. give us more than we can bear. And so only you know what we can bear. And so Almighty God, I ask that you take care of the needs of those that were left behind, his children, his wife. Continue to provide the avenues and comfort. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.